Alex, I am not a card-carrying materialist, but I have been a hard skeptic about the uh, capacity of altered states of consciousness, such as states induced by uh, psychedelics, meditation, hypnosis, um, as providing any uh, uh, veridical evidence that consciousness is not material. Uh, am I wrong? I think you're right in not being a <laughs> materialist car carrying. But, <laughs> but I actually think that these anomalies, these anomalous or altered states, are, first of all, central, although being at the periphery, that's why they're anomalous, are central to understand consciousness. Because in any field, and that includes even clinical science, um, the, the weird, perturbed cases, even an N equal one, a single case, can just provide an insight that then a thousand yeah, orthodox cases sure. would not, sure. because they're just concentrated on what we already think we know. Um, also, personally, I've had psychedelic experiences. I've also had mystical experiences. I went to India. So I, I also have first hand of what those things are. And yes, I would not immediately pontificate and take those experiences and categorically say, because I had them, this means that the universe is, is fundamentally <laughs> um, conscious. <laughs> but at the same time, we should not rush to do the opposite. So I would, I would insist that these altered states, hypnosis and other ones, I think offer perhaps maybe a longer but a faster route to really, um, if, we, if we are, if we really want to test theories of consciousness, like if we want to prove ourselves right all the time, just continue studying your whatever, yeah. your laboratory paradigm, I'm joking a little bit, but if we really want to make progress and realize where we're wrong, I think those cases are going to accelerate that they're terribly interesting, and also they have societal, ethical implications because you know there, there's a lot to be said about what psychedelic experience, psychedelic experiences are and do to people, and so on. Look, I am all for psychedelic research and the capacity of psychedelics to treat uh, diseases uh, like uh, post-traumatic stress th uh, syndromes, uh, their, uh, depression. Uh, I'm 100% for that. Uh, but uh, I continue to be a skeptic, maybe slightly less than I used to be, uh, but still a skeptic on whether this gives us any I deeper insight into the fundamental reality of, of, of consciousness. Um, if I had, I have not had a, psych a, a, a mystical experience, and nor have I taken psychedelics. Uh, many people tell me I should. Um, and my answer is, uh, if I had it, I wouldn't trust it. My own, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Even if I felt that I wanted to, my rationality would say that's just my own, you know, kind of emotional reaction to some beautiful movie or something. Well, that's interesting. Why do we trust more our waking, caffeinated, rational life as opposed to what happens while we dream or while we are there? I mean, this is an, this is a, another topic. Perhaps we don't have time to <laughs> to cover here. But but let me let me maybe wrap this up from another point of view and I'm thinking of Terence McKenna here. And I know, and probably you know too, that some really great, respectable scientists, neuroscientists, philosophers, really change their mind when they go through these experiences. So perhaps the way these altered or anomalous experiences would affect consciousness studies, perhaps is not only through <laughs> the data itself, but through the people that now yeah. there to conceive their experiments in a different way. And their specific yeah, cases, I'm we don't need to name. Uh, and it, it, it changes people's mind. And this is relevant because it's so hard for people to change their mind. Yeah, it's so hard. I, I agree with that. But th I'm really conflicted on that. I, I, I'm, I'm nervous that that happens because that, that assigns to your own experience some, uh, uh, some uh, potential artificiality that, that you're, you're, you're reading into it what's not really there. Because you can explain, there are ways to explain how psychedelics work with serotonin uptake or whatever, whatever it is. Yes, uh, that's, your favorite yeah, molecule. Yeah, yeah, sure. that, that, that you can explain how, how it works. Um, and that would affect your vision. I mean, if you 
poke your eyeball, you'll see different things and you know, it's purely, what's the difference? Well, we, we mistrust reality and that's a good attitude as a scientist. But also let me tell you, once you're in those states, you have the sense that that's the most real thing you've ever experienced. And again, that doesn't prove that is the case, but I would tell you, let's just, let's just hold the tension. 